This is your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode number 154, with guest Tatiana Jerome. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, Ask Kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. As always, I am so glad that you are here. We have a great guest for you today. Tatiana Jerome is here talking about her book, Love Lost, Love Found. And before we get started, I have just one quick announcement, and that's that I have two spots open for one-on-one clients to start in either the end of June or July. So quickly, there are two types of packages that I offer to work with me privately. You can get four open coaching sessions. And that's great if you are a woman who needs to make a big decision, like leaving her job or a relationship, or maybe setting some boundaries, having those hard conversations, or maybe you've been in a funk and you need help getting inside and to strategize about getting out of where you are in that funk and where you want to be. It's accountability and help strategizing and that sort of thing with that shorter package. My more popular package is The Daring Way, and that is based on the research of of Dr. Brene Brown. It is a five-month deep dive, which takes you from a place, in a nutshell, it really takes you from a place of fear, which we all have, into a place of courage and confidence. And basically, the women that come to me to do the daring way look like this. So typically they have their work and careers has gone pretty well. They have validated and esteemed themselves through their career, through their accomplishments in that department. A lot of times they are kicking ass in their work. Their personal relationships, on the other hand, are somewhere between meh and totally crappy. They tend to have surface level friendships and have issues with trust and intimacy. A lot of times they are overwhelmed and stressed out and they numb out. It could be with a lot of times it's with work, but it also could be with food or busyness. I get that a lot and wine and Basically, you name it. They also have a really difficult time being vulnerable. They'd rather plow through and think their way through it instead of feel. Vulnerability in the past for them has felt foreign and it won't solve any problems. That's their belief. Like being vulnerable does not help me. They've convinced themselves really that they've gotten by just fine, avoiding vulnerability altogether. And it's worked that way, which I just described, has worked until it doesn't. And if that's you and you're feeling like I was just talking about you (laughs) and you're in that place where it's just not working anymore, I invite you to come and check it out. So it's over at yourkickasslife.com forward slash coaching. You'll click on the button on the left. And if what you read on that page resonates with you, there is an application right there on that page to fill out. Those applications come to me directly. So I would love to see what you're up to and to see where you're struggling and to see if we are a great fit to start work together this summer. All right, let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Tatiana Jerome, author of Love Lost, Love Found, turned her personal experience into not just a thriving online presence, but a career counseling women and speaking at a variety of organizations. She lives in Florida and her website is tatianajerome.com. So without further ado, here is Tatiana. Tatiana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you about this topic because who doesn't? have issues in love, right? (laughs) Yeah. People are like, no, never me. Not at all. Yeah. And I love your book, Love Lost, Love Found. And I'm most curious, like first, let's start from the very beginning and tell us why you wrote this book. It's a mixture of things. First, I was helping other people with their relationships. And everyone kept saying, well, write a book, write a book. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to write a book. And then I went through my own relationship ending and that one was just traumatic for me. I don't know why it was just so hard on me because, you know, you've gone through relationships Mm -hmm. before and then they hurt, but then you move on. But this one, I was like, I couldn't get out of bed. 
I wouldn't eat. It was really bad. I've never experienced it like that before. And so because I always write things down, it was the best way for me to let everything go. So then that's when the book came out because of me just wanting to write things down. And I was writing. I'm like, oh, I know this stuff. Mm -hmm. I know. I know it. It was like my spirit told me and I ignored it throughout the whole time of the relationship. So, yeah. And I didn't really think that me writing it down. I didn't really think that it would be something where other people are like, oh, my gosh, that's it. But, you know, it seems to be very relatable. Yeah. So are you saying that you were kind of journaling about your breakup and then that was sort of gave birth to the book? Well, I didn't journal the breakup per se. I just said, let me write oh, okay. and at the end. And I just that's what it was. I was just writing and writing because like, I've been writing since I was small and mm-hmm. I just love to write. And I don't even use my phone for notes. I put everything down. So when I'm writing it and I'm like, oh, OK. And there you go, because I wanted to express everything that I felt. And I just started to feel better mm-hmm. each time that I wrote something. And I'm like, oh, you know what? This is what it is, because now I could really say outside of the people that I was helping that for me, OK, this is what I know. This is what I know. This is what I've been telling. And I'm like, I know this and I still ignored it. <laughs> oh, you weren't taking your own advice. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> how, did, Brutal. how is it that I did that? I don't understand. And so that's how it came. Ah, oh, you got a dose <laughs> of your own medicine. Exactly. I'm like, I'm telling everybody else and here I am. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, gosh. That's humbling. Yeah, that is humbling. And I mean, that happens when you're in sort of like the self-help industry that inevitably will happen to you. So I bet that was a kind of bittersweet. Yeah, it really was. It really was. And then I'm like, never again, never, ever. (laughs) Like, let me not curse myself, but (laughs) never, ever. Yes. So we're going to kind of go over several things because I, I know the listeners, many of them are in partnerships. Many of them are single. Some of them are thinking about getting out of a relationship. You know, we have a wide variety kind of all over of different places that women are in, in their love life. So We'll just start kind of, I'll just pick a place. And how would someone let go of a relationship that they've been in for years? That's, that's a tough one, but it takes, I would say it takes baby steps Mm -hmm. and to shift focus. And I know it sounds easier said than done, but it really is a shifting of your focus to yourself now because you're just so used to catering to the other person and your relationship. So that's what you're going to continue to think about. But you got to start thinking about yourself and your well-being and saying, what do I need today? What do I need from me today? And when you do that little by little, then it's not that you don't care about your previous relationship or that person, but you start to really care more about the relationship that you have with yourself. So that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm I can't help but think about when I was in a place where I was in a long relationship and it was so painfully obvious to me that it wasn't working out. And, you know, there was definitely some I've talked about it on the podcast before I was a love addict. And so there was definitely things going on that were, how do I put this, Um, (laughs) that were hard to kind of see past. Right. But I resonate with what you said about shifting the focus to yourself, because I definitely was not doing that. I was so obsessed with the relationship. And like I felt like it was my only duty on this earth was to save the relationship that I was in. And in order to do that, I had to change him. And that, let me tell you, that was, <laughs> it's impossible. But I, yeah. I took that challenge. I took that challenge like it was my job. And I was so, oh my gosh, just crazy. It wasn't a good situation. But I think if somebody would have told me, I love what Glennon Doyle Melton says. She says, like, just do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. And like, mm-hmm. that's what you said, like baby steps. Just baby okay, steps. what do you need to do to take care of yourself. And yeah. that's what I was not doing at all at all. So anyone listening, please use my story as a cautionary tale. (laughs) All our stories. Everyone's story. How would one know when it's time to let go? Because I think what ends up happening is, for my example, my intuition was telling me, but I kept second guessing it. Like I didn't trust myself. And I would always think like, well... You know, if we first it was like, maybe if we get married, things will get better. And they kind of did. And then the, then it didn't. Or maybe if we have a baby, then things will get better. And so how does one know? What's your advice for that? That it's time to let go? 
I believe it's time to let go when it's no longer growing you or serving you. And you going back to the first question where you just lose all focus. And like you said, trying to be the superhero and you're the only one fighting for your relationship. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's time to let go because, I mean, yes, we go through struggles and yes, maybe like this person's going through a hard time at the moment, but I don't know how long of a time you're willing to stay for this long period of time. If it doesn't get better, if you don't feel like, you know, you're growing me mentally, spiritually, or in any way whatsoever, I mean, we could still be friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't have to still be in this because I don't know why would you want to be in a relationship that's somewhat dead. It's a dry place. You're not being watered within you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So That's when I would say it's time to let go. And it's not easy, but you have to be able to make that decision for yourself and know that there is better out there. You were happy before you got into this relationship so you could still be happy even afterwards. I could see. Yeah, it's hard to sort of see past that. And I I love what you said about how I always think like you have to kind of put a time limit on how long you are willing to try to help your relationship when that other person isn't trying at all. Like, is it right. six months? Is it a year? I think people have like different thresholds mm-hmm. and there is very few things more frustrating than being in a relationship where you're the only one who's trying to work on it. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone, like you said, everyone has their different period of time, but there's going to come a point if it gets too long, especially for, you know, that person where it's just going to be like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't. And because in essence, why would you want to be in a relationship, but you feel like you're single? Right. It doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like, I could be single for real (laughs) and go date because you're still blocking any potential or possibility that could happen for you. So I can't tell you how many times I said in that relationship to myself and to him out loud, I can't do this anymore. I said it over, but I continued to do it. (laughs) I I know the feeling like I'm not doing this and you're hoping that you know the person's going to take it right and I don't want to lose my bluff no (laughs) no they just continue and you're just like what more can I do if they're not gonna do anything I've told you what I wanted I've done some actions to try to make it better and you're still not budging in any way Mm -hmm. and it's sort of hard because even when you're in that relationship, well, I wouldn't even want to call it a relationship anymore because it's sort of, it's just not a relationship because it's you by yourself at this point. Yeah. It's just like, I don't even know. It's more of the saying like you never go into a relationship needing Mm -hmm. because when you need, the Mm -hmm. person knows that you need and they're going to continue to feed into you needing. You want to go into a relationship whole and saying, you know what, if I ever want to get out of this relationship, I can, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's hard to deal with that because, of course, through time we get in our love bubble and then it's just like, oh, but if there's things that are happening, you should you want to be able to take care of yourself and stand for yourself and just be like, this isn't right for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I love all of that. And I feel like I somewhere had filled out a job application where it was my job to make him love me. Like, yeah, and and, like, <laughs> and, and I've, unfortunately, that was hindsight. Like I didn't. Well, no, I take that back. I think there were times where I had some mental clarity in the relationship where it was, you know, God or the universe or somebody was like, mm-hmm. you know, yelling down. Hey, girl, <laughs> you don't have to like, that's not good. Like, no, he's you shouldn't have to make him love you. And right. I mean, now that I'm it's been a decade and I'm in therapy and we're looking back on my family of origin stuff and we won't get into mm-hmm. all of that. But there was definitely a pattern. I will say that. And mm-hmm. it's I think it really takes some personal development on your own to look at that kind of stuff because when you're in it and it's so like in front of your face it's like trying to read a book that's up against your nose like you can't yeah you can't see it you won't see it yeah it's hard because everyone else around you could see it oh, and then yeah. you're the one who doesn't see it and it's like why can't i see it because that's not what you're choosing to see you're not choosing to see that you're choosing to see the good which is not a bad thing but eventually your eyes are going to be open crumbs of it yeah crumbs of good I'm gonna eat those. <laughs> you're like oh i didn't it used to be this big goodness and now like you said it's just crumbs where is it yeah but it's so funny because even what you said I noticed that like in my previous relationship when I was trying to decide, should I stay? And then I would get signs everywhere. When I say everywhere, 
from TV to like, I don't know, just outside. I'm like, I think this is a sign for me to go. Mm -hmm. Yet I still was fighting against the signs, but... It's really amazing what we choose to see. I remember after my breakup, and it was actually even a couple of years later, I was watching... Oh, it was the movie The Breakup with Jennifer Aniston Mm -hmm. and Vince Vaughn. And there's a Mm -hmm. scene in the beginning when they get in an argument. I think it's after that party that they have. Maybe it's before the party. Mm -hmm. And it was completely triggering. And it was this fight that they got in. And then there was the the Yaya Sisterhood movie with Sandra Bullock. And she's like yelling at her boyfriend on the phone. And I was like... Oh my God. Like that, is that like, are y'all thinking that that's not good? Because that was my life. Like, yeah. Is that, is that in a movie because it's bad? <laughs> You're like, wait, how did they know? How did they know? How did they know? It was like signs like that. Like, yeah. A, like, yeah, not good. It's mm. just a reflection. It's like, this is where I am. Whether I see it or not, it's like, I have to pick up on it. Like, Mm -hmm. I hope I pick up on it and do the right thing. I don't have to live like this. So, yeah. And I'm thankful for those signs that I got later because I was in a place where I was ready to see it. You know, I had pulled the book away from my face and and was (laughs) focusing on the words. And then it was actually really helpful for me to see that as painful as it was to watch and painful Mm -hmm. as it was to realize that I will no longer tolerate that anymore. And if it happens again, I will see it so very quickly and it won't be easy, but It's yeah. And I think now I'm in a place where a decade later, I'm grateful for those lessons. So very grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's at the right time. I think that the timing, like you said, is everything because Mm -hmm. then you could, you know, you get stronger and does build character. Like, you know what, you know what you want and what you don't want in life anymore. You're like, Mm -hmm. this isn't it. This guy isn't it. And I also think like for me, I've always, I noticed that you know, the person that I attract is part of me too. Even some of the things I didn't like in the person, they were in me. Like I had to be able to see that and say, I don't like that. So I need to fix that about myself as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily just that other person, but why do I, like you said, why do I keep getting that same person and bringing them in my life? Well, they're somewhat a reflection of who I am or a part of me. And I'm like, nah, I don't want that. I think right. I want it, but I don't want it. <laughs> so Exactly. Well, sort of on the same topic, how do you not get lost in a relationship? Like you said, same topic. And I say focus on the things that you like to do and don't stop the activities. Like if you like to go out with your friends, keep going out with your friends. If you like, you know, to go paint, keep doing that. Because eventually over time, I know for, I'll just bring up myself again, There was times where in the morning I would spend an hour just praying and meditating. And and then eventually that was gone. (laughs) Like that I don't have time. And I I just wouldn't put myself on top of my priority list. And I would just say, okay, did he eat? What do I need to do for this? Like, what do I have to do for my relationship with this person? So it goes back to the first question where it's, it's just making time for yourself. Don't get lost in it because you're still thinking about you, you still think about what I need to do. Do I want to continue to see my family uh, if I go every Saturday and not stop that because I'm with someone, Mm -hmm. you know, just keep things that you had going on before. If you're trying to accomplish goals, make sure you still go ahead and accomplish them. Don't try to stop because someone is in your life. In fact, they're supposed to help you. They're supposed to help you with your goals and you help them vice versa. That would be you know, the kind of relationship that I feel that is ideal. I made that mistake. This is, you know, the, this hour <laughs> is about Andrea talking about all the ways she screwed up in relationships. I like that you said that because I was in a relationship after my divorce of my first marriage. And that was a mess too. People have heard about that. But mm-hmm. one of the things that happened has been one of my biggest life regrets and that I I had gone back to college to finish my bachelor's degree and was in school when I was dating him. And mm-hmm. I had always wanted to travel abroad and I had always wanted to go to Australia. And oh. an opportunity came up with my major and I really just happened upon it. I didn't even seek it out. I was in the department office and there was a brochure about spending a semester in Australia. My degree was in exercise physiology. Like they had a department over there and I think it was in Sydney, Australia. I can't remember. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I've got to do like just one of those moments where this is it. It's my dream and I could totally make it happen with my student loans. And I could, you know, I didn't have kids at the time. It just, it would have mm-hmm. worked out. And guess who didn't want me to go? (laughs) So I didn't go. I didn't go. And I, 
I remember like looking at his apartment, looking at the brochure and just, and he was, he didn't want me to leave him. And it was such an awful relationship and I should have just gone. And I didn't. And it's a story I will tell to my daughter. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, you go, okay. Yeah. (laughs) But it's that advice that you just said of doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because there's so many life-changing things that open up our eyes. Even I have a friend of mine who was in a five-year relationship. And then within the last year before the relationship ended, they had plans to get married and have kids. She said, we have to live together in order for us to know if we will really work out. So they got a place together. And then within four months, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just wasn't going to work out. And But they still had the place together. So it wasn't that easy for them to just, you know, leave. And he moved out. But before he moved out, she had an opportunity to go to Greece. And she was like, oh, I want to go. But, you know, her funds were very low, whatever. But somehow, some way, she made it work. She went to Greece and she came back. She went for 10 days. She came back and she was just like, it's so beautiful over there. Oh my gosh. Just going across the you know globe and seeing it's much bigger than this. I don't really feel bad anymore for anything. I mean, now she looks at life in a whole different way. Wow. And it's just like, you know, it makes you just think to yourself again, what we're talking about, we're always in our bubble. So it's like, what can be better than this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, it can be better than this. Oh yeah. You don't have to stay in this, especially if you're not happy in it. If you're happy, then so be it. That's fine. But if you're not happy in it, then I mean, why go through all that? Mm-hmm. Don't let the things that you think are supposed to hold you back, hold you back. I mean, she literally didn't have any money. It was her mm-hmm. friend who covered for her and she just went out on a whim and just went and she's like, you know, God got me because I didn't know how I was going to get back and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I had a great time and now I'm able to see things better. Yeah. Yep. Those opportunities, they don't come very often. What about someone in a relationship? Like, you know, you can take, for instance, the one that I was in or a relationship like that. Like, how can someone finally put their foot down and demand respect from someone that really hasn't, where the respect hasn't been there? Well, I would just say you have to put your foot down. Meaning if you say you're going to leave, then leave. Mm-hmm. Don't say it. Like we were talking about earlier, I've done it 20 million times where you're like, like you said, I'm not happy. I'm going to leave. I'm mm-hmm. going to leave. I don't have to take this anymore. And then you sit down on the couch and <laughs> you're like still there. Your actions speak louder. Their way, it's almost like from the very beginning, you sort of tell them how to treat you. So if your word doesn't mean anything, then they know that. You're like, oh, she's still going to be here. Yeah. He's still going to be here. Mm-hmm. If, you know, if you say that I'm taking my stuff or you're not going to hear from me, I'm not going to talk to you anymore, then don't talk to them. Take everything out. Because at the end of the day, I would say, okay, well, this person is either going to come and fight for you and say, I want to salvage this. I want us to make this relationship work. Or they're just going to let you be and get your answer right there. Mm -hmm. But you really have to stand up for yourself and you have to be able to say, I am important and valuable. And if not to this person, another person will be able to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's another cautionary tale. (laughs) Here's what I did. I'm ready. (laughs) So I did that. I think a lot of people can relate to this. And here's what I don't want people to do. But this was my cycle. So we would be together for a couple of years, and then he would treat me badly. And I would say, stop doing that. And he would say, I will. And then he would still treat me badly. And then I would like, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to leave. I can't take this anymore. I would do that thing. And he, mm-hmm. he wouldn't he wouldn't believe me. And then here's what I would do. I would meet someone else, you know, because mm-hmm. I never would leave him unless I had... Backup. Tatiana is like, oh my God, girl, you're such a mess. No, I know this. You know, I okay. know this. You've heard this story before, right? And everybody's yeah. probably listening like, yes, I've done that too. So exactly. then I would meet someone out at the club and, and then he's better. And then, uh, yeah, I would always have somebody in the wings. And then I would leave my boyfriend 
And he was always surprised, like, oh my God, you're actually like leaving. And then <laughs> it was drama. Like I remember one time I left, we were living together and I packed my bags and was going out to my car in the parking lot. We lived in an apartment and he mm. threw himself like Dukes of Hazard style across the hood of my car, like <laughs> crying, like you're not really leaving. Like you, And I'm like, I'm out. And then, and then I would come back every time and I left like a trail of broken hearts these poor guys Aww. that I some of them were really great guys like that mm -hmm. were I remember this one I think I've told this story on the podcast before but there was this one particular guy I was I was young I was only 22 and he said and I had to call him and break up with him and tell him I wasn't you know, that I was getting back together with my ex. And, and he said, he, first he thought I was joking. Like he legitimately thought like, this is a joke, right? He said, listen, I may not be the right guy for you, but I know, I know that he isn't it. Mm. And I have never, I never forgot that ever. And I was only 22 and we got married six years later after that. But I, mm -hmm. that always stuck with me that he was a big enough man to say, hey, I'm not saying that I am the perfect guy for you. And I'm not saying this to try to get you to come and be with me. Because like my friends had said that. But when a guy said it to me, I was like, oh, oh. maybe mm -hmm. there is something to this. So anyway, yeah, it was this cycle of like, I am putting my foot down. I'm demanding respect. So I think my point is, if that happens, happens like twice there's your answer <laughs> yeah that it's not gonna let it change. go don't even play with it just like no because sometimes some people are addicted to the cycle oh we, we totally like, were oh, we do that. yeah it was it's a drug. like oh, it feels it's like if this cycle doesn't happen then it's like what do we have we didn't know what and it's interesting because neither of us grew up in like chaotic houses i don't know maybe it's just because we both grew up on mtv and jerry springer that's what <laughs> I don't know, but we created it together and it was like this volatile, just my hands are even sweating. It was just, it was just not like, I just think about how I was and I'm, I'm kind of sad for that girl and just, I so desperately wanted to believe that it would work out. Yeah. And it was just so disappointing over and over again that it wasn't. And it was so hard to face that reality of like, this needs to die. This needs to die. It is hard because the truth is which I learned the hard way is that, you know, the people that we love, I do believe we love more than once, mm -hmm. but the people that we love isn't necessarily who we're going to end up with. Right. <laughs> and we want that so bad, especially when you, you know, you have promises to each other and you say that this is what we, we're committed to each other. And then it doesn't work out that way. And it's like, but I spent all this time and, you know, I was consumed in our relationship and, I just invested in us. I just mm -hmm. believed in what you said. And I thought we had a plan. Right. And then next thing you know, it's just like, ugh. Did you change plans without telling yeah, me? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what book are you reading? Because that's not the <laughs> book we were reading the first time. Like, I don't understand. So it's just, I don't know. It's just so difficult, especially when, like you said, if you bring out those types of things within each other, it's like, what happened to the person I met before. What happened mm -hmm. to this person? It was like, oh, they only yeah. showed up three times. <laughs> That's right. it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that I think that what that brings up is the whole concept of self-trust. And for me, I didn't trust myself enough to listen to that voice inside of me that was saying, this needs to die. You need to walk for good. So what advice do you give for people to start trusting themselves to make better decisions, whether it's a making a decision to leave for good or it's making a decision to get serious with someone who they're not sure about because of past experiences? Well, the same thing with, you know, self-confidence and everything else. I think it takes baby steps, which is little things, even if it's a small decision you have to make. Just go ahead and make it, make the decision for yourself. Start thinking about you and just go from there. Just build up your way from there. Just say, okay, if it's to leave someone, just say, okay, well, I'm going to get my stuff and leave mm -hmm. and stick to that. I mean, no matter how much it hurts, just do that. If it's something like I'm not going to pick up his phone call or I'm going to change my number, I'm not going to search them on social media, I'm not going to stalk them. Little things mm -hmm. where you're like, I have to stand firm. I have to have the self-discipline for that because and once you're able to make those decisions for yourself, then you could do it in other areas of your life because your relationship with the next person definitely affects relationships with other people and the things that you do. So. Yeah. 
I do believe that these decisions that you make, I mean, you have to make a decision with something, anything, Mm -hmm. even if it's, let's just say it's not even part of the relationship, but it still affects your relationship. If for me, example, I stopped praying in the morning, then I have, I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put myself back on my priority list and go ahead and do that. And once I'm able to do little things like that and make that decision and stick to it and make that my habit or routine, I start without even knowing this, building the confidence and saying, hey, okay, I don't need this anymore. Like you didn't feed me, like you don't Mm -hmm. do anything for me, but this does something for me. And even so, I, I just know it's still difficult when you're trying to hold on to someone who doesn't feed you, yeah. but you have to be able to, you know, let go at some point. You have to be able to say what's best for me because this can't go on for another 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it can't mm-hmm. go on. It's a dysfunctional relationship. And it's like, well, what are your priorities in life? What do you want in life? Do you want to be in a happy marriage? If you want to be in a happy marriage, will it be with this person? Is this person even going to ever propose to me to begin with? So like, these are the types of questions you would want to ask yourself for you to be able to make a decision in the small ones too, and then go up to the big ones. Oh, yes. Yeah. I see a theme here of like, start small. (laughs) I, there's a lot of overachievers that listen to this podcast. And so (laughs) they're they're like, baby steps. uh." (laughs) But it's it's true. It's It's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about forgiveness, because I think that what comes up a lot is that, you know, you get to a certain age and you've made a lot of mistakes in relationships. You've put up with things that you look back on and you're like, oh, my God, what advice do you give of how someone can forgive themselves? Well, even with this, I'm big on spirituality. I just feel like you're not going to crucify me more than God crucifies me. <laughs> like you're just, you're just not going to do it. I'm not going to be held to the cross. So, and I'm not going to do it for myself. So if I know that, you know, if I'm going to, for my spirituality, for your listeners, if I know that God, you know, forgave me, then I have to let it go. How am I supposed to move on if I'm still stuck on a mistake that I made in the past? And then if I'm still stuck on that, then I'm going to continue making mistakes like this and I'm going to be guarded. I'm going to have a wall up the whole time and wonder why aren't things happening for me because I didn't forgive myself for something, Mm -hmm. for something that I did whenever, you know, like 10 years or 20 years ago, I was younger or maybe I was immature. The elements in life were different than they are right now. You know, the situation was different. So today I'm in a better place. Today I'm in a space where I can say and think, like, I'm not going to allow myself to do that anymore. If this person says this, what triggers me? I mean, these are all things of self-evaluation that I would need to know about myself. What is it that does trigger me for me to do this? Why do I think in this way? Because the results weren't what I wanted. So now I know that I'm going to move forward and just be like, okay, it's over. You know, I just said, this is it. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. I could apologize to myself. I could write you know, an apology note or forgiveness to note to myself and just say, I'm done. I have to be able to forgive myself because if I can't, then why is it that I'm able to forgive him mm-hmm. or her? Like, it just doesn't make sense. It's almost, again, what we were talking about in the beginning, the self-love, because you could forgive them easily and do it over again, but you can't forgive yourself. And I don't understand. Yeah. I like that perspective. I also, what's helped me forgive myself is that Because I spent a decent amount of time beating myself up and thinking, you know, I was a grown woman. I didn't listen to my intuition. People were telling me, why didn't I make better decisions? Why didn't I leave sooner? And and really, when I did, you know, a lot of what you were saying and and really worked on the forgiveness piece of it is and having self-compassion for myself is that I really did the best I could with the tools that I had. I didn't have very Mm -hmm. many tools. Mm -hmm. And I was really, I mean, this might sound a little bit crazy, but I was just trying to take care of myself the best way that I knew how. And I often tell people like, you'll leave when you're ready. Or in like my situation, like the universe will kind of step in and, you know, because I didn't leave, you know, he had an affair and left me. Thank God, because I (laughs) still probably be there or it would have ended some other way. But I do think that there was some divine intervention where the universe was like, okay. So we've sent you all these signals for the last 13 years. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> you want to take it. <laughs> Here's one that's five foot five and blonde. And it's just going to take mm-hmm. them away from you. So that happened. And yeah, and it was really now I look back on it 
And I'm not going to sit here and pretend, you know, when I really think about it, it's kind of like a little cringeworthy, like it stings a little bit. It definitely does not have the potency that it did because I've worked so much on it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in a place where it's like, I forgive that woman that I was. She was in a lot of pain. She was confused. She didn't know which way was up. And how was she supposed to do any better when she didn't know? Exactly. I mean, I think it's more so treating yourself, I don't want to say as a child, but you know, when a child has crayons and they're coloring on your wall, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not mad at them forever. You forgive them because you say they didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And you could look at yourself in that way and say, at that time, the person that I was, I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Or I may have known, but I didn't have what it took to leave. But now I finally left Mm -hmm. or I can leave. And you know, I think that's a, I hate to say it, but a good thing, like you said, if he had the affair, I mean, sometimes it's great for them to leave. Yeah. And for you to be like, I'm out of this. You know Mm -hmm. what? He did me a great service. Thanks for making the choice for me. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because it's so hard. And then even when they leave, it's just like, you know what? Now you're able to put some things into perspective. Yeah. I wouldn't say wait for them to leave you. (laughs) I would never say that. But (laughs) if that's the way it happens, then, hey, thanks. You know, thank you. Yes. Oh, I love this conversation. So I have have one more question for you before we wrap up. And that's, and and everyone, if you want easy links to Tatiana's site and her book, just jump on over to the show notes. And my question for you is, what do you most hope readers will take away from your book? The ability to let go and to love themselves. Because I I feel like the self-love portion, the ability to love yourself and realize that you could have so much more makes it easier for you to let go. Mm. And there's some people who say, well, I already love myself. And I'm like, "Mm." I mean, that's nice, but you don't do the actions that Mm -hmm. shows that you love yourself. Yes. It's more than just professing it. Yeah. Cause it's just like, you know, you could say, I love my mom and you never visit her. You never do anything for her. And she may not feel that love. She doesn't know that. She's like, Oh, that's Mm -hmm. nice. But no, you do things for yourself that feed you and say, Hey, okay, I do love myself. I take care of myself. I drink the amount of water that I'm supposed to drink. Mm -hmm. You know, like I wake up and go exercise. I do what I need to do to reach my goals. So, you know, I go ahead and you know, check things off my bucket list that I wanted to do. It's you attending to you because we tend to be nurturers of other people and relationships, but we don't know how to nurture ourselves. Like I can nurture and say, Oh, I love this person. No, you let me go feed you. Let me go do this. And then when it's for me, I'm like, I don't know. And then we, <laughs> yeah. You know, what do you want to eat? I don't know. I don't know what I want to do any, you know, like oh, we have to know, we have to know how to take care of ourselves, especially if we want someone else to come into our lives and be able to take care of us. They won't know because we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I really would want, it's more on self love. And also when you're able to learn and pick up your own self care regimen, then from there, you could say, you know what, I'm letting go of this because this doesn't fit into where I'm headed and who I am. Mm-hmm. You pick Good up stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone, again, it's Love Lost, Love Found is Tatiana's book. The link is in the show notes. And thank you so much for being here, Tatiana. I have absolutely loved this conversation. I'm so grateful for your work and for you coming on the podcast today with us. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. And that is all we have for you today, everyone. So until next time, I will see you out in a cyberspace. Bye-bye. Hey, Ask Kickers, you know what would help me out so much if you left a rating and review for this podcast? Your Kick-Ass Life podcast will always be free to you and to help me get more awesome guests and to spread the word, it helps tremendously if you leave a rating and a review. Now, they don't particularly make this super easy to do, so I'll help you out a little. If you're in iTunes and you're on your phone, when you are in the podcast app, you need to search for your kick-ass life podcast. I know, even if you're subscribed, this is how you do it. So when you search for it and you see it come up, 
click on the cover art, then towards the top where it says reviews, click that, scroll down a tiny little bit, and then click write a review. Stitcher is a bit easier if you're on Android. The easiest way I found to do this is to type into Google stitcher.com, your kick-ass life, and voila, my podcast should pop up as the first link. Scroll down and click write a review. That's it. Thank you so very much. You have no idea how much it helps me when you do that. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.